So, we are, where are we now? Verse? Verse 9. Okay. Now, verse 9. It's, uh, verse 9 and 10 is about honouring God. And this is about giving back to God. Now, in the Old Testament, it was a command. It was a command. They are to bring their tithe to the Lord. And if you really go and study the Leviticus and so on, uh, if you remember, it's not one tithe. It's more than one. There are actually, some people say, you know, uh, I, I, I rather tithe. Yeah. It's not just one tithe. You're going to read there three tithes. And if you really want to follow Old Testament, three tithes. Okay, verse 9. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Now, if we look at Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 19. Let's look at Deuteronomy 8, verse 1 and 5. Sorry, Deuteronomy 8. Okay, later I find I, I will go back. I want to show you the, the ties, not just one. Okay, let, let's go back to just uh, Proverbs 3. Verse 9, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits. Now, when you do this, it is to recognize that God is the provider. He made it all possible. But some people's favorite song is, I did it my way. <laughs> but if the Lord had not given you the weather and the land, and the other elements that come with it. Then, where would be your harvest? You follow me? If there be locusts, and locusts land on your field, wiped out, all your harvest wiped out. If there be no rain, or if there be flooding, what good is your harvest field? Nothing. So when you have your harvest, the first fruit and it is known amongst the agri agricultural people that the first fruits they always taste best. That's why uh, when we went to Thailand uh, some years ago, 2009, and we went up to the mountain, that was a, the, the harvest season for rice. And, we, and because we went, ministered to them, did outreach and, and, you know, and so on, preached the gospel, in appreciation on the final day when we left they gave us each they got nothing else to give but they gave us each a bag of rice and they said these are the first fruits first harvest is for us of course they also offered to the Lord but this is for us and it is they are giving of their best to the Lord to us for, for, for the Lord's servant. So in the Old Testament is honor the Lord with your possessions. Now for the Levites, I wanted to show you the, 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 the chapter. If you know when they occupy the land of Canaan, every tribe had a portion, a parcel of the land, except the Levites. The Levites' responsibility was to attend to the temple. So if they attend to the temple, how then do they live? What do they live on? 
So the rest of the tribes were commanded to give their tithe one tenth, bring it to the storehouse of the Lord, which is the temple, so that the people who minister and attend to the needs of the people spiritually, because all the eleven tribes, their needs, they bring it to the priests, and then the priests will bring it to the Lord to even the high priest. And so while they, they attend to these spiritual needs, their physical needs will be attended to by the tithe from the rest of the tribes. Mean by ma? So if you do that, verse 10, your barns will be filled with plenty. Your barns will be filled with plenty. That means there will be no lack. There will always be that you are, because it is more blessed to give than to receive, right? How can you give when you are not blessed? The fact that you can give is because you've got more than enough. You can give. So, your barns will be filled with plenty. And your beds. Wine. Wine speaks of what? Joy. Wine speaks of celebration, rejoicing. So it is not a picture of sorrow and pain. It is celebration. When it is harvest, the people that they dance, they celebrate and so on. And it will overflow with new wine. Because there will be what? Grapes. Harvest. So, for us, we are not farmers. I don't see any jungles here. Yeah? But you honour the Lord in your giving. You honour the Lord in your giving and your barns. And these barns of yours is not referring to your POSB bank. Not referring to your stock market. Your property portfolio. No. Yes, you might have material blessing, but your spiritual bank your spiritual bank will be filled. So it is about your credit because whatever you do unto one of these people, you're doing it unto the Lord. And as you give to the people, as you give unto the Lord, all this will be credited to you. And your vets will overflow with new wine new wine. You can also add to this wisdom. As you are generous with the Lord, He will add to your wisdom. He will give to you liberally. Remember, all this were conditional to the one who seeks after Him, you will get wisdom. To the one who asks of Him, you will get wisdom. To the one who is upright, He will be a shield to you. Yeah, he will protect you and so on. And so, you will also, you will also, as you give unto the Lord, this, all this shall be your portion, your blessing, and your beds shall overflow with new wine. But if you look at it with your human eyes, then you say, no one, I still didn't get my second condominium. I still didn't get my car. I still didn't get my, the job that I crave for. My bank account is still near to zero. If you are looking at with your physical eyes, then you are trying to generalize. Now, God has His reasons. Some people are blessed beyond their socks. Some are not. But here, we are not looking at just physical blessing. We are looking at spiritual blessing. And this is not a formula. So some people say, I put $10 in. God promised, huh? 10 times, I should get back $100 this week. Then it didn't happen. Then how? So, if you look at it with spiritual eyes, you will know. So, let's move on. We can talk about giving another time. Verse 11, Chastening of the Lord. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest His correction. The chastening is disciplining. The correction is also instruction for discipline. And sometimes we do walk off the line. 
we go off course and then we get corrected to come back to the course that is okay and in the process of course there must be repentance but some people are so proud they despise the chastening that means I can do no wrong I can do no wrong mistake also won't apologize now I tell you I was in a room with another pastor talking to another guy it is about some agreement and so on so this guy was being reviewed by the pastor no, you didn't do this but then the guy looked at the contract but that's not what the contract said. Well. So after we had a break, then the pastor then admitted to me, hey, actually, uh, what he says is true. He's right. He, this pastor is wrong. But we went back to the meeting. Uh, he did not admit, did not, uh, he will continue to make his stand and insist until the meeting ended in the stand. So again, I'm saying, it doesn't matter what is your title. Bishop, Archbishop, Pastor, Elder, whatever. But you are doing it in the presence of God. He is watching. So, sometimes it is, it is time for us to recognize our fault and repent and change. So do not despise the chastening of the Lord not detest his correction. Now, I, we, we have got lots of questions why this thing ended up this way. Like what you read in the papers today, you heard on radio yesterday. But, God has a purpose for sending these people to wherever and maybe there will be evangelization. Evangelism. Outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yeah? In Changi or somewhere. We don't know. But do not despise the chastening of the Lord. For whom the Lord loves, He corrects, He disciplines, just as a father, the son in whom He delights. If I allow you to smoke whatever you want, to drink whatever you want, to go wherever you want, stay out as long as you want, yeah, study or don't study, I'm loving you. Really? Really? I don't think so. In fact, I don't love you. That's why I let you do what you want. But it's because as parents, as grandparents, we love our kids. We love our grandkids. Your grandkids, not mine. Don't have it. Okay? That we will take occasions to correct them, to instruct them, or even to discipline them. And that is the same the Lord will do to us. For whom the Lord loves, He correct. Have I been corrected? I have been corrected by the Lord a few times. Yeah, usually because I say too many nonsense. <clears throat> so, verse thirteen. Are we there? Verse thirteen. Happy is the man who finds wisdom. And the man who gains understanding. This is the rewards of wisdom. Now, this verse here will become more meaningful if you put next to it, replace it by Christ. Happy is the man who finds Christ. Wisdom is personified in the person of Jesus Christ. Happy is the man who finds Christ. And the man who gains wisdom for her proceeds these are the benefits of wisdom for her proceeds are better better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold Solomon should know this very well Solomon was the richest man right mm -hmm. he had everything but thank God he asked God for wisdom at the beginning. And towards the end of his life, when he wrote Ecclesiastes, what did he say? Meaningless, meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Chasing after the wind. Right? 
But some people say, of course, you can say what you want. You enjoy all of your life. Then now you say all this. I haven't enjoyed my portion. But still, it is the experience of someone who has gone down that path. And he said, please don't. Please don't. So you find Christ, you gain understanding, and the proceeds or the benefits are better than all these precious stones, better than silver, better than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies. And all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. Length of days is in her right hand. So again, it gives us an indication of someone who has got Christ, someone who has got wisdom, and the portion in that person, in that person is he will have a long life. Now, usually, the other thing is the left hand. Uh, left hand is always negative, not so good. But in this case, even the left hand has got riches and honor. In the left hand, riches and honor. These are the rewards of wisdom. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. These are good qualities of life. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and peace. So the two P's there, pleasantness and peace. And I can think of Jesus. Yeah. He can't give what he does not have. Peace, peace, I live with you. Because he has peace. Everyone else was panicking in a boat. Wow, going to sing. But he was resting in the Lord. You can say sleeping, but he was resting. Do you think he wasn't aware of what's happening in the boat? I'm sure he was. But he had peace. And he was pleasant. He was pleasant. He did not hold Peter by his neck and say, you deny me three times, huh? you say you didn't? Yeah. He was pleasant. He wasn't rough. He only showed his anger when he found that his the, the house of the Lord was turned into a thief of tents. Now, a den of thieves in Matthew 21. Oh, that time he really got angry. This is righteous anger. But for the right reason. But other than that, Thomas said, No, I don't believe until I feel and touch you. Slap you, man, been with you three years, you still don't believe. But come, come, touch and see. Right? Jesus is blessed. Okay? Anyway, there are more things you can find out about Jesus as you read the gospel. But her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. And happy are all who retain her. Now, if you read even from Genesis, uh, was there not a tree of life, tree of life in the Garden of Eden? There was. Jesus was there. But because Adam and Eve they sinned. Better ask them to change address, move out of Garden of Eden. Because if they stay in their sinful nature and they partake of the tree of life, you know what would that mean? Means forever. Tree of life that means live forever, right? Forever they will be in sin. So it is the mercy of God that they were removed from the garden, that there will be a chance for them to repent and come back in God's design for reconciliation, for redemption, that they can come back into His garden, which we read in Matthew, no, in Revelation 21, 22. Then they come back. But if you, if they had remained and they went to take that fruit, forever and ever they will be in sin. And so that is the mercy of God. And you can read all the way to Revelation. Now, we don't have time to go through all this, but you can read all the way to Revelation. Uh, you will find again the tree of life. 
in Revelation 21, 22. Okay? So let's continue. Where are we? Verse... Okay, verse 18. She's a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all those who retain, are all who retain her. Again, again, you see effort required. She is a tree of life to those who take hold, go and take possession. And happy are all who retain. So not only take, but keep it. Take the word and keep the word. Apply the word. Now, the Spirit of God will not open the word of God to lazy minds. Understand? I repeat, the Spirit of God will not open the word of God to lazy minds. If you are so lazy, then you expect suddenly, wow, you can remember this verse, quote this verse, and so on. You know, like computers. Rubbish in, rubbish out. Right? Nothing in, also nothing come out. So you must make effort to take hold of her and then to retain her. Effort is needed. Okay, now, verse 19. God created and sustains with creation by wisdom. So we go a little bit into creation. The Lord, by wisdom, founded the earth. By understanding, He established the heavens. If you don't believe me, you go and read Genesis chapter 1 again. You still don't understand how He did it, but you know, it is the wisdom of God. Why he made things that way. The stars, the sun, the land, the sea, the heavens, the birds, the animals, and us. You know, you look at the world around us, it wasn't a mistake. It cannot be two stones banged together and then Big Bang Theory. And that's how we ended up, as we have known. By his wisdom, he founded the earth by understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up and clouds dropped down the dew. Then, we look at the rewards of wisdom. Verse 21, My son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So they will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Who cannot sleep well at night? Put up your hand. You know what's the cure? Read the Bible. <laughs> no, some people, they can't sleep, they read the Bible. That's a sleeping pill. They sleep. <laughs> but what it means is, the Word of God will give you life. The Word of God will give you peace. So no anxiety, no nothing. Then you can rest even in the sea of storm like our Lord Jesus did. And when you lie down, you will not be afraid. You will, your sleep will be sweet. Verse 25, Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes. Of course, if you were in Paris a week ago, there will be some anxiety, some fear and so on. But, but that is only human reaction. But after you settle down, then do not let this fear overcome you. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. The Lord gives you confidence because He is your shield. He will be your deliverer. He will be your protector. His banner over you is love. And God is there. God is present. 
for the Lord will be your confidence. He will keep you safe. He will keep your food from being caught. And next, we have wise relationship with others. We must also live how to learn how to live with others, to share with others. So we see, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in the power of your hand to do it. If you go back to Leviticus, you remember when they do harvesting, <coughs> were they supposed to glean the whole field? No, no right? God said, you go one round, whatever you have taken, you have taken. Leave the rest. For who? For the strangers. There are some people who don't have land. They, they, they are poor. So they, they come by and they take from the leftovers. And that is God's social work. Who started social work? It's not all these homes and so on. It is God. God had this in mind. And God loved the world. God did not love the church, the Christian, and so sent Jesus to die. God loves the world, even for this people. So if, you, if it is within your means, within your power to help them, to do good unto them, do so. So there is never a bad time to do a good thing. And today's still early. Huh? Yeah. Come back, 10 minutes later, I'll do good for you. <laughs> there is never a bad time to do a good thing. So let's look at Romans chapter 12, verse 18. Romans 12, verse 18. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. A lot of things to learn from this. First, it means that sometimes it is not possible. You understand? Huh? Some people are just very difficult to get along with. I'm talking about in the church. Huh? You know, in the church. Amongst believers. Wow, irritating man. Ask stupid questions, do stupid things, and irritate the rest of us. If it is possible, as much as depends on you. Read this again. The, the onus, the responsibility, the initiative should come from me. Because if I depend on the guy who is irritating me, it will never happen. You understand? Because he is still irritating. But let's exercise grace and mercy. So as much as depends on me, it takes effort on my part, live peaceably with all men. Live peaceably with all men. But this pastor, I know, I'm telling you because I, 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 I move around with them and so on. I want to tell you, not because I want to put down but I'm saying we are humans and even people at the top yeah he's right he's right he's always right and he said I don't care I really don't care I will tell it to your face and he makes the staff working with him all work and live in fear but he said we produce result because it is you because they do it in fear. But we serve Jesus in fear? No. We serve Him in love and in faith. But He is a go getter. He wants. That's why they go for the biggest church. They go for this. They go for that and so on. Yeah. When you are at the top, the devil can't miss. He's aiming for you. You understand? The devil aims for you. And who do you think the devil wants to shoot? The one at the bottom? No, he scattered the shepherd and no, he, 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 he destroyed the shepherd. He scattered the sheep. Okay. 
So I'm telling you real people. So uh, that's why I always remind myself nothing else but just try to live peaceably with all things. And I think if you do the same, I think this is going to be a better world to live in. I must get my right. You're right, you're right, you're right. According to the law, you're right. But where's the grace? So, let's live peaceably with our sins. Since we're still in Romans, let's look at 13 verse 8. This I like about Paul. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. I owe you nothing. You owe me nothing. Yeah. I owe you. If there's anything I owe you, I owe you love. Love you. Okay. I must. That means if I owe, I must pay back, right? If I owe, I must give back, right? So what I owe you? I owe you love. To love you, except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law, not to abolish the law, to fulfill the law. Because the law in Deuteronomy chapter 6, what did God say? Love God with all your heart and mind and soul and so on, right? And also, it also extends to the people around you. So, when you do that, you are fulfilling the law. Back to chapter 3, Proverbs. Verse 28. Do not say to your neighbor, go and come back, and tomorrow I will give it when you have it with you. Do not devise evil against your neighbor. For he dwells by you for safety's sake. Do not strive with a man without cause if he has done you no harm. So don't go and look for trouble. You know, go and look for trouble. It doesn't concern you, but you came for king. <laughs> yeah. Must go and. Now, if you, you go back, you, you go and look at 2 Chronicles chapter 25, I think. 2 Chronicles chapter 25. No, 35, sorry. Uh, verse 20 to 24. Uh, but let me just give you a quick summary. If you remember, this was King Josiah. He was okay. He was okay. He was in, in Judah. And then this Egyptian, Egyptian king, I can't remember his name, he wanted to go and attack the one uh, king in Babylon, near Euphrates River there. It doesn't concern Josiah. And then he went to approach an Egyptian king, didn't want the Egyptian, and want to attack the Egyptian king, who was going to attack Euphrates. The Egyptian king said, Hey, who one in this? None of your business. Please go back. It doesn't concern you. But Josiah insisted on staying and fight. And you know, the arrow of somebody shoot wrongly. Ended, landed on Josiah. And then he called his soldier, Take me home. I'm, I'm hit, I'm hit. And he died. And he died. The Egyptian king got no problem with him. He wanted to attack the Euphrates, the, the Babylonian up there in Euphrates. But he came home. And he lost his life. That is one you can read in Second Chronicles chapter 35. So do not strive with a man without cause if he has done you no harm. That is wisdom, basic wisdom. Then, next, do not envy the oppressor and choose none of his ways. You know who is the oppressor? The violent man. Please don't admire him. Please don't appreciate him and say, Wow, I want to be like you. Bible says, do not envy the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Because I rather follow the way of Jesus. He is gentle, he is kind, he is love. Next, the last part, the contrast between the righteous and the wicked. 
Verse 32, for the perverse person is an abomination to the law. The perverse person represents everything that is not righteous. Perverse. Perverted. Yeah, the word is an abomination, detestable before the eyes of God. But his secret counsel is within the upright. His secret counsel, God's counsel, is with the upright. Secret and secret. Inside. Where? In your heart. As we started the study today. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked. His curse is upon the lawless, but He blesses the whole of the just. Surely, He scorns the scornful, but gives grace to the humble. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the legacy of fools. And so, even as we read verse 34 and verse 35, we are encouraged to be humble, to have humility. And He will give grace to the humble, but He will put down the proud. So Father, we have learned much even this day. We thank You for the wisdom that is found in Christ Jesus. And for the assurance, Lord, that as we continue to seek You, we will find You. As we do so with all our heart, our mind, our strength, with all our soul, Lord, we will know you, we will understand you. And we know as we continue to walk uprightly, you will be our shield, the front, the rear, and even the flanks. Lord, I know that in you there is security, in you there is salvation. So, Bless the household of everyone present here today. Let your portion re remain with us. And no shame shall be our legacy, but blessing and glory be yours and ours in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.